Hey guys, so another um, video that I want to talk to you about where it is good to use a grid and where it isn't good to use a grid. So um, first we're going to take a look at an example of a landscape where I do think that it's helpful to use a grid to get your initial layout. And then we're going to take a look at a different kind of landscape where it would not be very helpful for me to use a grid. Um, remember, I'm not using a grid very often. It, I think it takes too much time and I think that it um, flattens everything out, especially if you continue to use the grid when you start to draw in the details. Um, however, there are a few instances where it's going to help you get the proportion of things in a landscape um, more accurate. And so let's start by taking a look at that and then we'll look at a situation where I would not find it helpful at all to use a grid. And so then you can kind of get a sense of where you might implement the grid method and where you wouldn't want to. And really I think freehand drawing without the grid is going to be the best practice that you can continue along your path. But sometimes you have a project that has a a quick turnaround time or you know you need to make sure that your proportions are accurate and the grid can help for that. So let's take a look down at the page. Um, so first off here I have my little um, cheap homemade grid and you can see this video over here on how to make uh, your own grid if you want to do that and I slide my photograph in and this is a photograph of um, of downtown Austin uh, and I happened to be on the bridge where there was a rainbow and it was like connecting right to the building. I think that's the 360 building. Um, so anyways that was kind of a cool opportunity and this is a photo that I would want to use a grid for and the reasoning for this is that um, I have many elements in this drawing that are, let's use a long ruler, that are just off of vertical. So let me kind of get this centered for you so you can see this. Um, they're just off of vertical and just off of horizontal. So you can see, for example, this railing. When I put my long ruler on it, maybe if I scoot it over here, you can see it a little bit better. But that's just barely off of horizontal. And then this is a different angle. This is a different angle. This one is a slightly different angle too. All of them are just off of horizontal. So it's really helpful for me to have a true horizontal near something that is just off of horizontal so that I can actually see that angle a little bit better. The same is true with this in the case of my verticals. You can see this vertical is really far off of vertical, as is this one. And then these are slightly off. So having a true vertical right next to the, those, it really enables me to see what those angles are just a little bit better. The other reason that this one I think is helpful um, in using the grid method is because these buildings are recognizable landmarks in Austin. And so if I wanted to make a drawing that was realistic and showing what Austin really looked like, if I made this building too small of a proportion or too tall of a proportion in relationship to this one, it would be very obvious if my proportions were inaccurate. So using the grid method can really help you to get not only this relationship of sizes in height and width, but you can get this one accurate in relationship to this one, in relationship to this one. So that can help a little bit. So you can see here what I did with this one. And I always like to move these out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. <clears throat> Was that I set up my grid method here. I copied the same grid over here. And I put in a little bit of color just so that you guys could see. Otherwise, um, I think there's so many various elements in this drawing that it was a little bit hard to orient myself in it when I didn't have the trees colored in. So I colored those in. So then you can see I've got the railing, I've got the bridge, 
Of course I included the ninja style kung fu. Who wouldn't want to include that? But uh, this is just a preliminary sketch, of course. And then I got this building, the crane. Um, you can see a little tiny bit of the frost tower back here. And then this crane and this building over here. Um, I actually think, you know what? Did I put this in the wrong way? Nope, that's right. Okay, so um, so I've got this building. I think I'm missing a line here. That's what makes sense. So now this building is complete or sketched in at least proportion wise. Um, and then I was able to do these smaller buildings here, here, and then um, a few of the lights that are on the pedestrian bridge over here. So that one was really easy to lay out once I had the grid method. Now let's take a look at another landscape where I wouldn't want to use the grid method. Okay, so this one is a photograph that I took on a hike in New Mexico near Tent Rocks. And the reason that the grid doesn't work very well for me on this type of image, and I'll swap it out so that I can put this in the grid and you guys can see. Um, I don't think it works very well because A, the grid method to me always flattens things out. Even if I stop using it once I shade everything in. Um, so with this, it's not necessarily about the proportion of this compared to the proportion of this compared to the proportion of this. If my proportions are just off a little bit, that's okay because nobody knows exactly where this photograph was taken. It's not like an iconic landmark. It's not something that's recognizable necessarily even to like which area of New Mexico I'm in. It could be some other desert landscape that's in the same state or that's in another part of the world that's similar looking. So there's nothing that's like a standout feature that I have to get in the right proportion. Instead, what's most important about this photograph is that I'm showing the depth and sort of the deep space of the desert landscape. So proportions are not quite as imperative and instead the grid is going to just really flatten everything out if I continue to use it. So the other thing is that um, I think it's easier to get some of these slopey lines that are gradual slopes if I just sort of sketch them in with a simplified grid. So I'll show you what I did here. And when I use these, um, these plastic sleeves, and I know it's not going to be something that I can apply to any drawing, like if I use this plastic sleeve with those marks on it, with this image, it's totally not gonna relate, right? So that has absolutely no meaning whatsoever to this photograph. So instead of using a Sharpie, then I use the Expo markers. The Sharpies will still come off, with um, hand sanitizer, I use just one of those little spray pumps with, and the hand sanitizer is mostly alcohol. So you could just get a little spray bottle with alcohol in it and that would work too. Um, or half alcohol, half water. Um, so instead though, I use these Expo markers, the dry erase ones, because those come off really easily. Um, they still come off best when I'm using the hand sanitizer or alcohol um, spray. So um, what I did instead was I just did a simplified grid. So I took my long ruler, I divided the midway point from side to side, and I just put in a line there. And that's gonna help me to kind of see where this shape is in relationship to these long, slopey, rolling mountains over here. Next, I could have just dropped in a line that was the halfway point from top to bottom here. But instead, what I did was I wanted to pick a line that was in relationship to where a lot of those mountains in the background were. And so that's a little bit lower than halfway. And so then I put in a, ver um, sorry, a horizontal there. The next thing I did was that I just kind of, with my red 
<clears throat> um, dry erase marker, I just sort of marked out where the major features. So I blocked in the bigger mountain hill. I blocked in a couple of slopes in those hills, especially these sort of conical form formations here that are really particular to tent rocks. And then I got in these slopes that are just a little bit off of horizontal and these that sort of show where the rolling planes kind of go in between. And then there's really only one standout plant here, which is this Choya right here. So <clears throat> then I was able to, let's see if you guys can see all of this. I'll kind of cover it up like this. Now you can see everything. So then I was able to do the same thing <clears throat> on my page. I did my midway point. I did just below halfway here and I kept those lines really light. And then I could block out those same features kind of looking at the space between the edge of the photograph and the edge of the page and the midline and the edge of the page to try to get those proportions right. You can see I even blocked in the major cloud features. And there are some minor ones over here that I didn't include because those will be a little bit easier for me to just place by hand. I put in the Choya, I put in some of these, um, this is probably mesquite or maybe laria bushes. So I put in some of those and where they're going to be um, level. And then I put in, you know, all of the little same features that I put on my grid, I then put in my drawing. So in the case of a true sort of natural landscape, usually I'm going to use a simplified grid and that makes my life so much easier. It saves me time because I don't have to copy the grid over and then I don't have to make a copy of that um, image from the gridded page to a non-gridded page. It also saves me because it helps me to start to think of the landscape in terms of the 3D space and the volumes that I'm going to be looking at so that I can really, when I start to shade in, I can really focus on how do I make that look like that space has depth in a way that I just can't focus on when I'm thinking about the grid at all. So a simplified grid for a lot of landscapes. And honestly, I use the simplified grid for so many other things, for doing animal portraits, for, um, you know, even for humans, like the simplified grid is probably my go-to method to hand draw and plan out everything. It's kind of related to my lessons on structural line. So go ahead and check out those videos too, and I'll give you links over here. Um, so hope that helps you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions down below and, um, yeah.